This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. Week two of the NFL preseason gets underway tonight. We got one game Thursday, 13 on a Saturday, and then two coming up on a Sunday as well. Our job today is to break down NFL preseason week two and talk about my favorite bets across all the games at FanDuel Sportsbook. This is covering the spread, a FanDuel research podcast. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor at FanDuel Research here to break down NFL preseason week two and lay out my favorite bets at FanDuel Sportsbook across all of that action. We'll dive into all that here in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you are subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. On yesterday's show, we had Austin Cass on to preview this week, this season's EPL slates, talking some futures, talking about the golden boot, and breaking down match week number one, which begins on Friday. If you want Austin thoughts on on all that go to covering the spread and find it there you can also go to the FanDuel YouTube page and FanDuel TV plus tomorrow we're talking UFC 305 with Austin Swain so full week here on the show Again, all these shows available on the Covering the Spread podcast feed, the FanDuel YouTube page, and FanDuel TV+. Plus. If you're watching the FanDuel YouTube page, leave us a thumbs up there. We appreciate all of you, as always. The dog days are here, and the coolest place to get in on the MLB action is FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook, because this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There is something for everyone every day all summer long. You can score bigger winnings in any inning with profit boosts, snag bonus bets for home runs every Tuesday, and even beat the heat with no sweat bets. So head over to FanDuel and start making the most of your summer. FanDuel official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball must be 18 plus in D.C. and 21 plus in present in select states. Opt-in required. Wager requirements apply. Bonuses awarded as not withdrawable bonus bets or profit boost tokens. Restrictions apply including bonus expiration see terms and conditions at fanduel.com slash sportsbook gambling problem call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash rg in colorado dc iowa kentucky michigan new jersey north carolina ohio pennsylvania illinois tennessee vermont virginia and wyoming call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in Arizona, 1-888-789-7777, or visit ccpg.org slash chat Connecticut, 1-800-9 with it in Indiana, 1-800-522-4700, visit ksgamblinghealth.com in Kansas, 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana, visit mdgamblinghealth.org in Maryland, 1-800-GAMBLER.net in West Virginia, hope is here, visit gamblinghelplinema.org, or... Call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts or call 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY in New York. Let's take a look at preseason week two in the NFL. There is one game tonight, as mentioned, that is the Eagles and the Patriots. If you want some thoughts on that game, I did write it up over at FanDuel Research. Just go to FanDuel.com slash research to find that. We'll also have a breakdown of the Sunday games via Austin Swim going up Saturday evening or Sunday morning. So if you want to uh, get some action for Eagles, Patriots, or for the Sunday games, go to FanDuel.com slash research to find breakdowns of all of those. As far as the Saturday games, though, let's begin things with the best team to watch every single preseason. That is the Kansas City Chiefs. The Chiefs taking on the Lions in preseason week number two. And I think there's some value in the Chiefs to record 250 plus receiving yards. That is even money at FanDuel Sportsbook, which may seem kind of steep, but I do think that is a value here. The Chiefs love to let it rip during the preseason. They're willing to play Patrick Mahomes, and we saw him get good work last week. He tends to play enough in week two of the preseason as well. So I think we can feel pretty good about this, despite where the number is at. We have three years of data, or I guess three plus years of data on the Chiefs playing in week two during the new preseason format where there are three preseason games. In those week two contests, the Chiefs have thrown for 317, 251, and 393 passing yards in those games. And that includes yardage lost on sacks, which does not count for this specific market, which is just receiving yards. Overall, we have a 10-game sample of preseason games under the new format, and the median passing yardage total for the Chiefs in those games is 257. Their average is 255.1. Again, that includes deductions for sacks. Andy Reid has already said the starters will play a full half in this game. 
Mahomes himself may not make it to halftime, but he will play into the second quarter as he typically does in week two of the preseason, and that helps us plenty. But we also know that, that Carson Wentz seems pretty eager to let it ride and kind of see what happens. So it's a good combination of things where the Chiefs have shown they will air it out in the preseason. They have rookies. They kind of want to get acclimated, Mahomes said, uh, with Xavier Worry and Jared Wiley. They've already said they're going to play the starters a full half, so at least in the second quarter. And we have two quarterbacks in Mahomes and Wentz who are willing to chuck it deep. So yeah, even money is kind of tough to pay in this market, but I still think that we can get there based on what the Chiefs have done, what they've said, and what the personnel looks like here. So even money, Chiefs 250 plus receiving yards, I think that is a quality bet for the games on Saturday. The second game I want to discuss on Saturday involves a team that's pretty thin at quarterback right now in the Washington Commanders. The Commanders have said they're not going to have Marcus Mariota in this game and Sam Hartman also not going to play. So typically, when you're getting situations like that, where a team is down, some key pieces at quarterback, we're going to be looking towards unders, trying to avoid positive props on that team. But I actually do think we can be positive about the Commanders specifically to get 125 plus rushing yards. Currently a FanDuel Sportsbook, that is plus 115. I do think there is value in that number in large part because the quarterbacks will play for the Commanders in this game. Those are Jaden Daniels, Jeff Driscoll, and Trace McSorley who just signed at the team. All three of those guys are willing to run the football. Driscoll had 23 rushing yards last week. Daniels had just three, but it was a rushing touchdown, and it was on his lone drive of the day. And McSorley, when he was at the Ravens, did show that he had a lot of athleticism and was willing to run. So the commanders, all three quarterbacks willing to run, I think that plays a key role in this specific market. But also, they've got uh, Brian Robinson and Alston Eckler there. They both had... Uh, uh, at least some work last week, five carries for 20 yards for Robinson, two for seven out of Eckler. So we should see both those guys in there alongside Jaden Daniels for this week as he ramps up, especially considering the lack of depth the commanders have at quarterback. I don't know how the commanders will do overall in this game because, again, they are without their probably likely second and third string quarterbacks the regular season, and that does hurt things, but I think they should be pretty run heavy and they should be able to move the football while they're out there, especially via the legs of their quarterbacks. Jeff Driscoll was going to be a tight end at one point. So like he's not going to throw the football efficiently, but he could run it. He was an option quarterback with the Titans or with the, the Texans back in the day. So I think that all three of these guys should be willing to run the football here. So the commanders 125 plus rushing yards, one plus 115 at FanDuel Sportsbook. I do think that is a value based on the personnel the commanders will and will not have during this game. Final bet I want to discuss for the Saturday games is between the Seahawks and the Titans. The total for that game is 35 and a half and the over at FanDuel Sportsbook is currently sitting at minus 105. And I would understand some trepidation here because these teams are doing joint practices for this week and we do see some teams pedal back their starters when that's the case. But I think there's still enough here to justify an over 35 and a half. And that's because both these offenses are going to new systems this year. Obviously, new head coaches on both sides. Brian Callahan likely calling plays for the Titans. And then uh, for the Seahawks, they got Ryan Grubb in there as well. You probably want to get those offenses acclimated with those new systems. We also saw the Titans let Will Levis do a bit last week. He played two drives. Now, he probably played two just because the first one was very short. Uh, it was a short field there after a long kick return. They scored a touchdown there, scored a touchdown in Levis' second drive as well. Maybe we get a quarter and a half out of Levis this week. If we do so, that'd be pretty fun. But also Mason Rudolph is behind him. Rudolph earned time with the Steelers last year, uh, was the number two quarterback in week two. Malik Willis is, is what he is, but like, you know, was at least a third round pick. The Seahawks, I would bet, are probably not going to run Geno Smith out there because of the joint practices, but they've got Sam Howell as a backup. In week one of the preseason, Howell dropped back 29 times, just two sacks for Howell, which is good for him. Uh, but he's a capable backup in the NFL, as we've seen, and P.J. Walker will follow him as well. So again, there is some risk due to the joint practices. But this is a pretty low number at 35 and a half already. The Titans have a chaotic quarterback in Will Levis. And honestly, Malik Willis is pretty chaotic as well. The Seahawks have a somewhat similar quarterback in Sam Howell. And high chaos quarterbacks are good for over. So I would understand if you didn't want to go with this one, given that the joint practices do influence the way this total could play out. But I think that 
based on all the factors combined, there is value in the over at 35 and a half. So my three favorite bets across preseason week two in the NFL, we're going to go with the Seahawks and Titans over 35 and a half minus 105, the commanders to rush for 125 plus yards at plus 115, and the Chiefs to record 250 plus receiving yards, even money at FanDuel Sportsbook. That's all that we have here for today on Covering the Spread. As mentioned, though, back with you once again tomorrow, talking UFC 305 with Austin Swaim. Check out the EPL show with Austin Cass as well to get his thoughts on the first game of the year for the EPL tomorrow and also his top futures for this year. If you got any questions for me, I am on X at Jim Sonis. You can find FanDuel Research on X at FanDuel Research. Want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your bets across preseason week two in the NFL. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow to talk some USC. This has been Covering the Spread, a FanDuel Research podcast. 